So, I told you guys in one of my videos I was going to show you these June... I call them June bugs because that's when they come out the worst. Everybody else calls them, like, fish fly. I think fish flies are their technical name. But there's, like, nicknames like May flies and June bugs and July flies and stuff. They always come out in June. It's June right now. But... Oops, let's see. Hopefully you guys can see that. But, like, this... The sad thing here... It's dark and there's this many. Like, they flock to any kind of light source. So, I'm gonna show you why I'm driving down the neighborhood. And actually, it rained last night, so they're not really that bad. But look at them just covering the road. And you can hear them when you drive, just crunching. see just under every street sign or every street light I don't think you'll probably be able to see it because my phone doesn't like to focus at night or I should say in the morning because I'm going to work but businesses like actually literally just shut their lights off like up here is uh, Circle K like past where this car is driving by right now here to your left and it's open but it's literally pitch black like all you see is like some lights on through the glass there's no street signs on no nothing all these neighborhood lights over here are off it's just disgusting like the I don't know what they are where they come from it's something to do with the lake we live on Lake Erie, and the myth, I'm going to call it a myth, but I'm starting to believe it. The myth that I've always heard growing up was that the more fish flies there are, or the more June bugs there are, um, the cleaner the water is, which sounds so ass backwards, but it's been pretty like accurate to be honest with you like from like last couple years we haven't had them that bad um even this year like they're terrible but we've had them way worse before but like the last couple years the water was kind of stinky and like just nasty looking and there really weren't that many like we had a few nights where there'd be like a handful on the house but like that was really it this year it's getting you know where they cover everything and the thing is they die like I think they live for like 12 or 24 hours like that or something like that and then they just like literally that quickly just turn into like a skeleton and they're dead um, it's nasty they stink um, the Kroger by our house like the first set of doors you walk in you know where the carts are um, they just have like vacuums and like one of the bagger people, because I used to work there, so I've done this. One of the baggers' job, their entire shift, you know, like whoever's work, at least one, let, let me rephrase that, at least one person the entire time they're open is out there just with like shot backs, literally just sucking these things up, like in hordes. And then you get out here, like maybe a mile away from our house. Uh, about a mile and a half, but still fairly close to the water, but then there's none out here. Um, the last time, uh, Saturday night, when I was up in Detroit for, you know, another slingshot meet, I guess you guys can just assume now that, like, every Saturday and Sunday, that's what I'm doing, or Friday sometimes, there was really not that many bugs, like, driving home, you know, there's, like, mosquitoes and regular stuff like that you hit with your car. But once I got to the stoplight that's right outside of my neighborhood, it was like a wall. Like, I just drove into a wall of these bugs. Like, there were none. And then there was swarms. And it's not just my neighborhood. It's all along the water. You know, it's all the neighborhoods along the water. But, uh, I know this video is probably, like, unwatchable now because this road is super rough. So, I'll cut this off and I'll see you guys. For me, it's going to be... Ten hours from now for you guys will be here in a second. Alright, I'm on my way home now.
Can't you see the the joy in my face? It's such a great day. It is the latest we have gotten done at work by like two hours now. Um, it's almost 3.30. is ridiculous at this time. Nobody knows how to drive. So yeah, there was another confirmed case at work today. Um, there's what I originally heard is that um, some lady's boyfriend or baby daddy is the term they used tested positive for it and She's thought that he's had it for the past few days, but they weren't for sure. And she's still been coming to work, so you know that's exactly how this stuff spreads like wildfire. Um, and apparently, his test came back today and it was positive. And so, the company's best course of action, their response is. To send her home for two weeks and send the entire plant nobody that was around her they're fine you know but I guess it's just that they're fine because I guess you just can't transmit it now or something so just her sent home for 14 days or whatever and you know get tested and all that and then send the entire facility to an early as hell lunch, our normal lunch, well, my line's lunch is normally at 11.30 to 12. Send us to lunch at 10.30. So, and this was, mind you, like, it was like 10.20 or something like that when we found out. So, you can't call and order anything. You can't, you know, say, hey, uh, such and such food place that I ordered for 11.30, um, my lunch changed to right now. That doesn't work. So a lot of people had to cancel their food. A lot of people didn't have food. And but that's irrelevant. You know, there's places and fast food around. So whatever. Let's send the entire building to lunch at the same time. A lunch room that has enough capacity to handle not even one full line right now with the tables, you know, sectioned off for people. Let's send the whole plant to lunch. Three lines. In a small space, and then, you know, the one, the, the large chunk who want to go outside and smoke and, you know, just be outside during lunch. They're still really close together. The ones inside are close together. It's a great idea, isn't it? Sorry, I'm just totally ranting here, because... I find it another, I find it to be complete bullshit, the way that they handle it. And then I heard that that particular line that this lady was on, um, apparently it's decently frequent that somebody gets sent home because they have a fever and they're not feeling good and stuff like that, like, as of, like, lately, because before this, you could literally be dying and they wouldn't give the slightest shit. From what I heard, and this could be complete speculation, this, like I said, I stress this is what I heard. Um, somebody had asked, why aren't, was, okay, so let me rephrase too, let me back up. Their course of action is to send the entire plant to lunch and then go spray something in the air. And that's it. Like, don't wipe anything, just spray something around in the air, and I guess that's good in their eyes. So, I kind of just find it hard to believe, like, one, when we go back in, like, I feel like you might smell something in the air, like, you know, if something was sprayed, or any kind of chemical or cleaning agent that could disinfect and stuff like that, like, I feel like you would smell it. Because any of my household products that you spray have a pretty strong scent, whether they're scented or not. So, there's no scent. And we work with a lot of materials like like vinyl and cloth and stuff like that. And, you know, people's jackets or hoodies that they have hanging up and, you know, whatever miscellaneous stuff's around. 
there's no marks or residue on anything and the amount of dust in that place I feel like would get kind of like patchy like you would just notice you would see like the dust you know kind of like wetted down or something but there's nothing so I'm not claiming they do or don't do anything I just don't personally notice anything myself um, so anyways where was I at where was I going so apparently somebody had said you know like why aren't you doing this every time somebody goes home when they're not feeling good or somebody has a fever and gets sent home or something why has it only been like this just a couple times out of all the times this has happened and apparently somebody said it's because it depends basically it depends on how many people know about it in other words if a lot of people know we have to pretend to do something about it if not a lot of people know we're just not going to do anything about it because we don't care so just you know hey employees who don't want to be back to work yet and don't need to be back to work yet slap that's what that feels like day turns shitty real quick and then you know of course they call 10 hours and we haven't done that in like four months now like they weren't even running that many like back when they were running you know full production or whatever so that was annoying and i guess i it it's kind of like a double-edged sword in a sense i don't know if i'm using that term correctly but we when we were brought back to work you know we're told with all these packets and paperwork and um you know announcements and meetings that you know it's going to be limited production you know blah 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 all these precautions you know to keep you guys safe and you know not be here too long and that was supposed to go until like what i remember was like august sometime and here we are in june like barely a month after we've come back and right off the bat we were working way more than we were supposed to and now they're just basically back up to full production from what it seems like um the other line is scheduled to work saturday which it's like at this point if we're ready for full production and everything's safe why are we still wearing masks why are there small pieces of plexiglass all over you know why is there the world's nastiest smelling hand sanitizer at a few spots like it's just it's it's really it's just backhanded like you tell us one thing and then you do the complete opposite so yeah that's all my day went had to rant had to get out here and vent you guys um and the big the thing that pisses me off the most is you know as you guys have heard me say i'm sure a million times in the last couple months like shelby's days off lately have been monday and tuesday and i have been off saturdays and sundays she's off mondays and tuesdays so fortunately me being off saturday and sunday you know i get to see her before work and we get to have breakfast or lunch and you know see each other for a few hours and i'm typically up when she comes home and then monday and tuesdays are nice because the way our schedule is like she's sleeping a lot of the time and then you know when i come home she's usually had probably just gotten up within you know the last two hours or so so it's not like you know we really missed out on a lot of time seeing each other so what makes me mad today is today's tuesday and my job and her jobs have a track record of like you would swear they don't want us to see each other like and i'm not talking just her job now like back when she worked at taco bell back when she worked at walgreens she's worked every shift you can think of and my job somehow seems to always manage to keep me there the longest on the days that i would normally get to see her the most like for instance today um normally i would have been off work around one o'clock or so you know home around 1 30 shortly after she's getting up you know she's just like starting her day at that point so even though i had to work all day like she gets to wake up and pretty much see me all day until i go to bed for work but today she's off got up a little bit earlier than normal and my job was like nope you're working 
a couple extra hours today. You're working, you know, more today than you have in the last... You're working longer today than you've worked in the past four months, basically. I don't know. It's just... It's annoying. It sounds kind of dumb when I explain it, but maybe you guys know what I mean. So we were going to do steak, but... I don't mind grilling just in just, like, literally about any weather, like rain, snow, fog, you know ice cold, super hot, but wind sucks because it just seems like the grill just doesn't like to get hot enough because, you know, obviously it's super windy, so, um, it's Chinese. Tried something new that's not like me. I'm like a, you know, one or two types of food everywhere we go kind of guy. Um, I usually get like Chinese, I'll get sweet and sour chicken, or um, I forget what the one is, I think sesame chicken or something, whatever, it's like chicken, but it's got like that glaze on it, and, like sesame seeds, and it's over like rice, um, and usually like vegetables or something in it too, that stuff's really good, but uh, I tried, I got chicken with broccoli, so... We'll see how that is. Cool. Nobody knows how to drive. Like. Park somewhere else. So, yeah. Um, Chinese place has new rules. They're still, uh, still not letting people in, I guess. I just realized I did what I do at work. I forgot that I didn't put it over my nose because I'm so at work all day. I was at work all day. I was far away from everybody, so I didn't. I didn't want to have it over my nose because it makes it literally it makes my glasses fog up and I get lightheaded. Hey, there's a slingshot. Yeah, so they got a big sign on the door. I don't know if you guys could read it through the camera, but it says one person at a time because there's literally like they closed off the whole building so there's literally just like a little standing cubby in there and they like open up this little sliding thing and like hand you your stuff there might be enough room in there for you and like a small child or something and I see this guy walking up through the reflection I'm like uh, I'm in here it says one person literally no room for you and he like opens the door and like starts to walk in, I turn around, and I just kind of, like, looked at him, like, I mean, hello, like, literally nowhere for you to be in here, so, wait the hell outside, we'll see how good this food looks, alright guys, I'm finally home, um, I didn't record any of it, because it's just me driving, so that's not really fun to watch, plus I drove the slingshot, um, the last clip you saw, actually, yeah, I'm going to put this before what you guys see next. So last clip you saw was our dinner yesterday. Um, that chicken and broccoli was actually really good. So the slingshot exhaust, more slingshot stuff. The slingshot exhaust is like where the passenger's foot is, like where you keep your feet when you're riding passenger. Um, if I can get a picture, I'll put it in right here. But it's like where your feet are. Um, there's, you know, like a, like a wall or whatever, like, like under the glove box. And right behind that, there's just a thin little like heat shield. It's like metal and like some kind of like cotton material. And then the entire exhaust system, like that's a car engine in the slingshot. It's a GM, like a 2.4 liter, like Ecotec or whatever motor, like a literal car engine. It's not like a little motorcycle engine or something. So, you know, in a car, you've got the manifold that comes down and that goes to the catalytic converter, catalytic converters. I don't really actually know how you say that because I always call them cats. 
and then you know more pipe and then the muff or the, yeah the muffler or mufflers more pipe and then the exhaust tips you know so it's like 10 plus foot of exhaust well on the slingshot obviously it sits so low and it's basically like just built it's like a roll cage you can't really do like an exhaust under it you can there are options but i would never because i almost scrape the bottom all the time and that thing as low as it is already now if i had an exhaust hanging down i'd be scraping all the time so the manifold comes off the motor and then it goes into a cat converter literally that quick like it's like manifold into the circle like pipe with the cat converter and then that goes into the side of this giant shoebox looking muffler thing that has one little like four inch pipe that just comes straight out the bottom and that's just that's the whole exhaust um when you're cruising on the highway it's not that bad like if it's really hot outside it does get a little bit warm but it's not that bad it's the biggest thing <clears throat> is like when I'm in Detroit cruising around with our slingshot group and it's stop and go and stop and go, a lot of island, you know, and you're not moving, it gets so hot. Like just in the footwell area because of the exhaust just cooking that stuff, you know, and it's, it's, it's you know, 200 degree air just, you know, making all that stuff hot, even though there's a heat shield. Um, one of the things is the cat converter those are like a thousand degrees or like 800 i don't remember to be honest with you but they're really really hot um all of the aftermarket exhausts pretty much do away with that and it just basically goes from like a header to a, a collector pipe and then to some sort of muffler or sometimes a straight pipe depending on which one you buy um a lot of people they gut the cat like there's all this stuff that i'll that you'll see like this material inside of it it's like honeycomb but on these things it's made out of like aluminum and it is so tough to get out like a car you can just take it like take a hammer and just like a screwdriver and just kind of chisel it out and it just breaks up and comes out it's that simple this thing was a pain in the ass so the pipe the catless down pipe to buy is like two hundred dollars. I was like, I'm not buying. I'm not paying two hundred dollars for one pipe. You know, I can buy the whole, the whole aftermarket exhaust I want is about six, seven hundred bucks, give or take. Which... So as usual, I've been having more issues with my clips recording. Um, for some reason, that clip just cut halfway out. Um, but yeah, like I said, the cat pipe without the cat in it is like two hundred dollars. And the entire exhaust that I want that comes with that is only like six or seven hundred, which no time, no time soon am I gonna buy that. But you know, that's one of the big upgrades that I do eventually want to do. Um, I had posted on Facebook because a lot of people that's one of the first things they do. You know, like me, I'm big, to, I'm big into like the electronics and stuff like that, and the audio. Um, a lot of people are going for performance or you know sound upgrades like engine wise you know like exhaust uh upgrades and they'll rip that stock stuff off and then you know just throw it in a box or throw it away so i had posted in one of the slingshot groups i was like hey you know anybody that upgraded your exhaust would you happen to have the stock pipe laying around still you know and you want to give it away or you know you want to sell it cheap or something let me know i'm looking for one um and this guy actually like almost exactly where we meet um, he was in that same Michigan slingshot group, but almost exactly where we meet, like three miles away, um, is where he lived. He's like, yeah, I got one. He's like the manifold and the cat converter. You can have it. If you just come get it. I'm like, really? I'm like, you don't want nothing for it. I'm like case of beer even. He's like, no, man. He's like, it's just taking up space in my garage. I'm, you know, ready to throw it away. I was like, hell yeah. So I rode up there after work. I drove the slingshot to work and then drove it home and then drove it up to like Ferndale, I believe was the area, something like that. But it was, you know, up towards like the Detroit area, a little bit past Detroit. And then um, when I got there, he had the manifold, the cat pipe and the muffler, like the entire exhaust he gave me for free. He didn't say anything about the muffler at first. I'm like, that's kind of cool. Cause I, I have wanted to experiment with the factory muffler too. Um, a lot of people, the thing is like this big around, like this tall, like this thick, it's huge. 
and there's one like probably about five inches long like one pipe that comes out the bottom and that's just you know that's the end of your exhaust a lot of people will drill another hole like on the complete opposite part on the bottom there's it's like split and then just like tack weld in another pipe that's you know about the same length same angle and stuff and it flows better and it sounds a little bit better you know it, it's not like raspy or like you know ricey sounding or whatever they call it um and i've really wanted to try that but i'm like i just don't want to destroy my factory stuff you know and end up hating it or like do it wrong and ruin something you know so he was like hey you can have that too i'm like dude that's awesome so um he threw it all in a big bag for me i drove all the way back down to my uncle's house in petersburg which was it was a little over an hour drive um and then what we did we took that cat because a lot of people will just like punch that material out and on a car that's not a bad idea like it'll usually work if you're you know trying to do it on a car because it's like ceramic so like once you break it it just kind of like crumbles apart and then it's easy to get out this stuff is aluminum it didn't give like you try to like break it up and it just like pushes through it like more and more it was a pain in the ass but um his idea was to cut it open like right at the top of that stuff because the pipe like curves and there you wouldn't be able to get it out that way so he cut it open like right on top of the stuff we punch it out he did i'm not gonna lie he did a lot of the work even with his uh his wrist is all messed up you see in the cast i was sitting there hammering away i was just beating at this stuff and i'm like my shoulder was starting to hurt my hand was cramping up from using the hammer and like you know trying to make sure i didn't slip and like hit my other hand or something like that um no excuses i you know i was say oh you know it worked all day i was kind of tired i don't know i just using a you know five pound sledgehammer trying to hit this little thing um but anyway so we got it all gutted out um and then we put it back together and he welded it up um one side of that metal is super thick and then the other side is super thin so what he had to do he had to like start the weld on one side and kind of like blip it over so that's why you'll see he's like bzzzt, bzzzt you know like he starts here and then goes to here and then starts here and then goes here um but yeah so it worked um we got it welded back up and uh i got it installed so you will see it doesn't really sound any different um performance wise it does there is a difference but nothing noticeable nothing that i would ever say yeah you gotta do this you know it, it made it so much better the big thing two things it has cut down on the heat because there's not, you know, that material getting to be a thousand degrees right there anymore. Like the muffler and exhaust gets hot as hell. Don't get me wrong. But that one chunk not becoming a thousand plus degrees is a pretty big difference. But the bigger difference is the gas mileage. Like I haven't done the math yet, but what I have driven since I put that on, um, I still got, I still have two bars on the little like gas meter thing by now what i've driven i would have been on e and i would have had to get gas so gas mileage has definitely shot way up and i looked that up online because i'm like am i is it just my head playing with me or something everybody that's done this has said they've gotten at least four to five more miles per gallon which is huge i mean on an eight gallon tank that's you know roughly 40 extra miles per tank you know that's my entire trip to work and then some like that's crazy that's big right there so um super happy we did it um now i'm kind of anxious to do the muffler and uh yeah so clips you're about to see was when i was at his house um you'll see me like showing you the the material that's inside of it that like honeycomb looking stuff it's super sharp dense aluminum and then uh you see him welding it up and then uh i did like a little start but you can't really tell the difference honestly like the exhaust it sounds a little bit like deeper but that's about it